Amongst the proportions that the Egyptians deemed to have sacred significance is the square root of three. Although initially seeming to be a somewhat obscure number, when we look at how the square root of three can be generated in geometry, its significance becomes clear. Using a compass, we first plot a circle. We then move the point of our compass to any point on the circumference of the circle just created. And without changing the width of the compass, we create another circle. We have now created two circles of equal radius that overlap one another evenly. Note that the circumference of each circle cuts directly through the center point of the other circle. The oval space that is shared by the two circles has been labeled the vesica Pisces. And if its width is taken to measure 1, then its height happens to measure approximately 1.732. We can only approximate the measurement of the vesica's height because, like pi, the square root of 3 is an irrational number. This means that it has an infinite number of integers after its decimal points. Any irrational proportion that can be easily generated by a geometric shape, such as pi or the square root of 3, was considered to be of special spiritual importance to the Egyptians, as well as their geometric heirs, the Greeks. To continue working with our vesica, we can connect the two center points of our circles with a line, and then connect the endpoints of this line to the vertical points of the vesica Pisces. We then find that we have created two equilateral triangles within the vesica. Note that all of the sides of the two triangles are equal in length to the horizontal axis of the vesica. Thus, the proportional relationship between an equilateral triangle's edge length and its height must be 1 to 1 half the square root of 3. Now, if we extend the edges of the two triangles just created, we find that the lines divide the two circle's circumferences into six equal sections. If we connect the points where these lines touch the circumferences of the circles, we find that we have generated a perfect hexagon. Naturally, Another perfect hexagon comparable to the one shown on the left can be similarly created in the circle on the right. As can be noted from the diagram, a hexagon is nothing other than six joined equilateral triangles. We can also easily see that in any perfect hexagon, if the edge length of the hexagon is taken to measure one, then the height of the hexagon from the midpoint of one side to the opposite side measures the square root of three. Moving into three-dimensional shapes, we find that the perfect cube also contains the square root of three. If we draw a line from the lower left corner in the front of the cube to the upper right corner in the back of the cube, and assume that the edge length of the cube is equal to one, then the transversal that we have just created measures the square root of three. This proportion is true for all perfect cubes, no matter what size or scale. The tetrahedron is another three-dimensional shape that contains the square root of three. Along with the cube, the tetrahedron is classified as one of the five platonic solids. In the platonic solids, every edge length, every angle, and every face is equal throughout a given polyhedron. The tetrahedron in particular is volumetrically speaking the smallest and the most basic of the platonic solids consisting of just four equilateral triangular faces, the smallest number of sides possible to enclose a three-dimensional space. In order to understand how the tetrahedron relates to the square root of three, we must understand that in any regular polyhedron, there are three spheres that are commonly used to define the shape. The insphere is a sphere that shares the center point of the polyhedron and whose surfaces touches the center point of each face. The intersphere is a sphere whose outer surface touches the center point of each of the tetrahedron's edges. The circumsphere is a sphere whose outer surface just touches the vertices of the polyhedron, thus completely enclosing it. In the tetrahedron, if the radius of the insphere is taken to measure 1, then the radius of the intersphere measures the square root of 3. Also, if the radius of the intersphere is taken to measure 1, then the circumsphere also measures the square root of 3. 
Thus, the three spheres of the tetrahedron form a perfect square root of three progression. Yet another three-dimensional shape that contains the square root of three is known alternately as the cube octahedron, the dimaxion, or, as we will refer to it here, the unified vector field. The unified vector field is classified in geometry as one of the 13 Archimedean solids. The Archimedean solids are similar to the Platonic solids, but differ in that their faces can consist of more than one type of regular polygon. As can be seen in the diagram, the unified vector field has eight triangular faces and six square faces. What is completely unique about the unified vector field is the fact that if we draw a line from its center point to any of its vertices, we find that line to be of equal measure to the length of any edge. No other polyhedron can claim to possess this type of equidistant lattice. Assuming that the edge length of the unified vector field measures 1, then we find that the distance between the center points of opposing edges measures the square root of 3. Another way of observing this same relation is to note that if the edge length of the unified vector field equals 1, then the diameter of its intersphere measures the square root of 3.